read it. I want you to see that, look, there's good reasons to believe in God. I'm not saying I'll oh, believe in God because it feels good or whatever. I'm saying that, look, it's logical and rational. Yeah? And there's good arguments for God. There's too much design for there not to be a designer. Yeah? So I'm saying that, look, if the universe didn't make itself, yeah, because it means that it didn't exist and then it came into existence to create itself, it doesn't make sense. From nothing comes nothing. So then that only leaves that, look, there's something powerful, something with intelligence, something that's independent, something with will outside of the universe that put the universe into existence. So I'm saying if that's the logical progression, if that makes sense, then why are we not connecting with the scripture that's objectively true, that can prove to you, has no mistakes in it, has no contradiction, has been preserved perfectly, and connect with that, but and the resulting in connecting with God. So I'm putting that on you, madam. Go on, I want to hear your response. So why do I think... I was even listening. Yeah, there's a lot <laughs> what of do you, what, what do you, ex Thank you. So you was listening, all right? Yeah. Now, what do you think, feel about what I've said to you? I mean, I don't know. Like, What's your thoughts on it? I mean, I understand it. Yeah. But I don't know, like, what, like, what about the science part behind it? Like, what about the science part? I'm give me some science. What, what, give me a, give, pose the question and I'll answer it. The, the sciencey part is right, it's a hypothesis that the universe came into existence through a Big Bang. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my question is, what caused the Big Bang? You speak to physicists yeah. Yeah, um, of quantum mechanics, they can tell you exactly when the Big Bang happened. Yeah. They can't say what caused it. They'll say, oh, there was a black hole, there was an atom, there was two atoms that collided. I'm saying what created the atoms? What caused the atoms to move? I'm saying cause and effect. Yeah. What caused the effect? Yeah. What caused the universe to come into being? Like, you know, it's mathematically implausible. It is like, it's impossible to calculate the chances that's required for us to have everything to the exact um, amount that we need it to sustain life. But you're saying, ah, it just happened by accident. Oh, no, I'm just asking. Because, like, no, 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 some no. people don't understand it. So, you know, get the whole... I would you know. say that a lot of people, they think about it in the wrong way. So they've got a disbelief or they don't want to believe or they don't want to follow the commandments revealed by God. Yeah. So they're like, okay, they've got their atheist lenses on. And now they're not going to see the signs of God. Yeah. And I'm saying the signs of God are all around us. We just need to take off our atheist lenses, put on our critical thinking lasers. Mm -hmm. Lenses, excuse me. So I'm not saying believe what I said because I said so or because the book says so. I'm saying that look, use your God given logic and rationale and it will lead you to God. I'm saying ask me questions. I'm saying that think about it. Let's discuss it. How many people, people of religion do you have, do you know, or are we perceived like that? Because Alhamdulillah, I would describe myself as someone who's quite religious, and I'm basing my reasoning on logic and rationale. So you would probably say, let's base it on logic and rationale, so let's have that convo. Yeah. Does that make sense? So what's stopping you, like, what, what of what I've said do you disagree with? To be honest, I'm going to respect that four minute deadline. Let me we... finish this thing quickly. And then no, no, I'm, I'm all right. I don't, I'm not in a rush. I'm I willing am, to extend I'll it. I'll finish what I'm saying and then I'll head out. Yeah, yeah go I on. appreciate it. Yeah. Um, no, um, I, I don't disagree with any of it and I don't think that anyone is wrong in their beliefs. I just, I've never really thought about it. I'm completely honest. It's not something I've ever really like sat down to be like, oh, yeah. Why not though? I just never really have. It's not something that's come across in my mind. What if I propose the argument that that's what society wants you to do? It wants you to become consumer driven. It wants you not to think about politics, not to think about the purpose in life, yeah. not to think about the big question because it changes their status quo. It changes, like, affects the top 1% who's got all the wealth. In Islam, we've got the third, zakat, uh, third pillar which teaches us to share wealth. Um, very quickly, because I know you're in a rush. In Islam, we have a concept that there's only one God. Yeah. God created everything for a reason. 
told us what that reason is through prophets and messages through a perfect book which you're holding in your hands. Yeah. This is an English translation. There's a four line definition of God, which is say God is uniquely one. Yeah. He's self-sustaining, eternal. He does not beget nor was he begotten and there's nothing equal to him. Yeah. Do you have any questions for me? Um, it makes wrong. sense. I've just never really thought about it. But I'm, now. Like, I'm more than happy to like take everything should sit down but it's never really been something that's come across for me. what's important to you right now not right now as in like generally in your life what's the most important thing to you right because you're i'm going to say the most important thing in my life is to know and recognize and worship and understand and connect with the creator what, what's your most important thing to know where i'm going in my life to be honest how are you going to know that Oh yeah, I'm still young, but I know what you mean. I know what you're getting at. Can I ask how old you are? I'm 21. Would you consider 21 to be young? Yeah, not like young, but like it's not old. My 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 my, my niece just turned 23. She's having a midlife crisis, but let's not go there. Yeah, um, <laughs> we've all been there. So okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the reason I say do you consider it to be young depends on what part of the world you're in. Yeah, that's true. The society. I'm saying 1400 years ago, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, uh, a perfect example to mankind, who taught us how to clean our teeth, how to treat our wives, how to treat um, our children, raise our children, how to do business transactions, how to run armies, how to clean ourselves after we defecate, gave us. How are you. Speak to this brother, and then I would say, Aki, speak. This brother wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to you. Yeah. Um, he's distracting me. No, it's okay. um, and then, yeah. So the Prophet Muhammad, right? He came with this message, and it gave us a complete way of life. Yeah. And in that time, you had like fourteen-year-olds who were the head of an army. You had um, Saladin Ayubi, right? At the age of 17, he was conquering lands. You know what I mean? They were getting married at the age of 11, having families. You had like people who were considered to be young and engaged to get married. So it's like, like imagine in 300 years time, like things change and then it's like, someone's going to be, oh, I'm 32. I'm 42 and I'm young. I'm 52 and I'm still young. Does it make sense? Like, it's all subjective. I'm saying that, look, can you guarantee me the next five minutes? You know? Then suddenly, the 21 years you've lived becomes very valuable. If you don't know, if you think about that, wait, I don't even know if I've got five minutes. Yeah. I can't even guarantee, I don't want to talk about yourself, myself crossing from here to the other station to get home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then suddenly, um, every moment becomes precious, like how are we spending it? Yeah. You're still in a like, yeah, yeah, let me, let me look into it, let me figure it out, like go with the flow. I'm like, no. Um, if you don't have a good reason not to connect with this book, mm -hmm. what do you need to believe this is from God? What's your criteria? Can you imagine? I'm telling you, this is a book that's been perfectly preserved and it's from God. You don't even know how to verify if that's true. You haven't even thought about it. What are you spending your time doing? Anything else, pretty much. I'm busy, bro. Busy doing what? I work. I'm at uni. Be, all right. Now, um, I don't want to embarrass you, yeah? On your phone, depending on what phone you have, um, it will tell you how much time you spend on devices. Mine is two hours a day. How much of that is on social media? None of it. Really? Yeah. I don't use social media. I don't like damn, it. Damn, 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 damn. Yeah. All right, I read you, I read you. All right. I read. I would say, do you? Yeah. Okay. Then what's stopping you from reading a perfectly preserved Nothing. book? I will read it. Ah, and I oh, welcome I that. No, no, yeah. and I welcome that. Um, let me just quickly. Mm -hmm. I yeah. I'm being respectful of your time because I know that like, 10 minutes ago you need to go. Yeah. yeah? Um, I would say my criteria for this to be per from God, right? Yeah. It would have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. There can't be no contradictions. Yeah. Um, the message has to be correct. It has to have prophecies that's come true. It has to be an expert on subjects. When it talks about history, it gets it right. When it talks about um, things that it shouldn't have known 1400 years ago when it was revealed, it gets it right. There's no mistakes, there's no contradictions. Yeah. The Quran says it's from God, from Allah, and Allah will preserve it. Right now, we've got over 200 million 
people have memorized the Quran word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. Yeah. If you Google when you get home, or on the train, if yeah. you Google um, Birmingham Quran manuscript, you see that in Birmingham University we have a carbon dated Quran in the time of the Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Carbon dated. So right now we've got oral tradition, which is primary, secondary is a tradition of like in a university in Birmingham. Yeah. So it's been preserved. So I'm saying when God makes a promise, yeah, God doesn't break yeah. the promise. So God has preserved it and there is no mistake. And even God, Allah says, look, bring something like it. Yeah. Something with no tradition, no mistakes, the linguistic miracles. Um, it was revealed over a 23 year period. Yeah. It talks about male and women, men and women, the exact same amount of times. It talks about angels and devils, the exact same yeah. amount of times. Yeah. And all these kind of linguistic stuff, which just like blows the mind. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah. what's your name by the way? Arabella. Arabella, my yeah. name is Ridwan. Hopefully, I've enticed you into reading this book. Yeah. If you've got any questions, we've got people outside of White Chapel stations on Fridays, Stratford on Saturdays. Yeah. Um, final comments. I'll leave the mic. I'll give the mic to you, madam. Final comments. I don't have any final comments. I'm going to go home. I'll give it a read. I'll, I'll, I'll right. Don't threaten me, madam. I'm sorry. I'll, Taking up so much of your time. I'll, I'll give you some stuff. Do, do you have any misconceptions or any questions about Islam you want to ask while you've got... Not particularly, to be honest. It all seems very straightforward, I'll be honest. Yeah. It's, one of the most, it's one of the ones that is really like straightforward, so I can't really fault it for that, yeah. to be honest. You are being absolutely amazing. I could keep this conversation going, but I'm going to respect your time. Thank you. And yeah. What are you studying, by the way, if you don't mind English asking? literature. Hence the reading. Ironically, yeah. Look into link look into the linguistics. I think you need to have a grasp of the Arabic. Yeah. Even the linguistic elements, like one of the challenges in the Quran is come with something like it, right? Um, a chapter. Yeah. The smallest chapter in the Quran is only three verses and no one's been able to come to meet that challenge. Yeah. So look into the linguistic miracles we'll do. and leave that there. Al Alabella? Arabella. Arabella. Yeah. Arabella. Yeah. You take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. <laughs> Thank you. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless her and guide her. Um, it initially started off with um, her not having a lot of time and then she got enticed to read the Quran by the permission of Allah. So may Allah keep her sincere and bless her. And assalamu alaikum wa